Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Button 91. I said Little Black Button, apologies, wrong, wrong, wrong YouTube channel, but welcome to Pray Like You're Mad uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we're talking to you today about hearing the voice of the Lord. Next week, we're going to be having a special guest on, Mike Boating. Um, he'll be coming on, we're discussing it. But this week, I'm going to do a solo thing. And I really want to talk about hearing the voice of the Lord. Because you know what? I can't lie to you. The last few weeks have been mayhem. Hey, cabro kataya. Father, forgive. It has been mayhem. Let me tell you why. Because my relationship with God on a previous level, I can really hear the voice of God. I can really hear him. I, I would hear it clear, whether it's, the, whether it's a Bible, whether it's a preaching, whether it's a sermon, whether it's God talking to me audibly, whether it's a vision or a dream or whatever, or friends, I could discern the, 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 the voice of God and the will of God. And that's, a, that's another conversation we'll have another time, right? Because hearing the voice of God is different from hearing the will of God. That's completely different. But, um, you know, I, I really I really was in this last few weeks kind of just been really thinking about like, God, I want to hear your voice, I want to hear your voice. And it's funny because I've been hearing his voice all the last few weeks. I just wasn't able to discern that was his voice. Right. So if you're one of those people that are in a situation now where you're like, I don't know if I can hear God's voice. I don't know if I can, if I don't, if I know how to hear it or I don't know if I'm actually hearing it or I'm hearing my own voice. Let's have a real conversation today. You know, I keep it a buck. I keep it true. I keep it real. Um, and we try to be as frank as possible because we don't want to alienate people. We want, to, want people to be able to be, come into the space, um, have that conversation. And I want you to feel like you're inclusive, you're part of it, and that you're being heard as well. All right. So let me pray and then we'll get into the, the show. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God. We're just praying the Lord. The Bible says that, Lord, the sheep know his voice and so father those of you have, those you have called to be a part of your kingdom and a part of your citizenship we pray that lord that their ears will be attentive today the bible says that let that, let those who have ears hear let there be understanding that will proceed from this conversation today father those who have confusion may there be clarity after this conversation for those who are uh, 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 lacking uh, uh, desire for you may they receive fire and desire to pursue you to love you and to want the things that you want lord and the bible says that you know we should seek the kingdom of god and all its righteousness and all other things shall be added we're just praying that lord that we have a pursuit and a desire for you in jesus name we pray amen listen let's get into it okay Okay, let's get into it. Listen, let me be real. Keep our keep it true. Last few weeks have been crazy. And I'll tell you why. Because there's an expectancy on my part that I have. When when I first came to Christ, you know, um, you know, I, I you know, as I got deeper with God, he was speaking in many, many different ways. And when we say hearing the voice of the Lord, what we mean is being able to hear what God is saying to you. Okay? Simple definition of what Hearing the voice of the Lord is simply saying, hearing the voice of the Lord. If you remember the scripture in 1 Kings 19, we have Elijah and it says that, you know, Elijah was in the, in the caves and he was waiting for the Lord to speak. And it says the Lord was not in the, the earthquake. He was not in the, um, he was not in the, the fire. He was not in the wind. He was in a store, a small, still voice. Um, and so when it comes to hearing the voice of the Lord, we have to understand first and foremost that hearing the hearing the voice of the Lord just means hearing God speak. You know, hearing God speak. Now, hearing can be broken into two facts because I can hear but not discern. Okay, I can hear but not discern. So I can hear what God might be telling me, but I won't be able to discern His voice. Therefore, I might not be able to take a, a, appropriate action due to the fact that I'm not sure what instructions are being given because I'm not sure if it's God or not right um and so this is really really powerful uh, uh in, in your walk with god that you get to a place where you're able to the word is discern now i love the scripture john 10 verse 27 i believe it is where it talks about uh, the sheep know my voice it is an acquaintance that we get to right so when we say hearing the voice of the lord it is being able to hear him being able to the, the ability to understand him the communication the discerning of his voice and then get the ability to be able to gain guidance and direction from hearing him you know what i mean like that's that's a part of the hearing god's voice now the really key thing about this situation i remember uh, and, and let me tell you why it's been a little bit crazy this particular last few weeks I want to be very honest with myself and very honest with you guys. You know, already I've been telling you guys I was on the streets. Okay, I was a prodigal son. I was on the streets for three years. Once you're on the streets for three years and you forget God and you leave God in the background, right? You forget the ways that God actually speaks to you. 
When I say forget, meaning you lose the ability to have confidence and trust in what God is actually saying to you. You know what I'm saying to you? So in that particular uh, fashion, when you are in a space where you've had an ability to hear God and discern him and discern his will, that's another extra part. We can talk about that another day, but you know, you, you know what it feels like. So when I came back from the streets, I was like, yo, how do I know what God is saying? How do I know what God is actually telling me? God, how do I know it's you that's talking? Because I'm like, I'm hearing a bunch of things and I'm not sure what I'm actually hearing. And this goes back to Matthew 5 verse 1, where it talks about Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 5, and where you get the story of the Beatitudes, where Jesus, Jesus begins to teach the Beatitudes. And as he teaches the Beatitudes, before he does, he says to the disciples, come up. And I'm all in my head, I always used to ask myself, what does it mean? Why is he telling them to come up to the mountain? Like, brother, you not why could you not preach down here? And the reality is he can't preach down there because what he wants to tell them, he needs them to be in a secluded area. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something so you see what I'm talking about, okay? Uh all right, so we're talking about obviously hearing God's voice. So look at this. Seeing the crowds, he went up onto the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. Now, the reason why this is important, and I, I you know, I, I, I reason why it's important is because, look what it says here, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, he's going up, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, meaning that there was a time where God had to elevate the people from where they were to another level so that they can actually hear what's being said, because down there, there was a lot of noise. When I came back from the streets, there's a lot of noise. I'm hearing my own thoughts, I'm hearing my, uh, my emotions. I'm hearing my flesh. I'm hearing, uh, uh, you know, other people's thoughts. I'm hearing the church. I'm hearing the Bible. I'm hearing so many different thoughts and I couldn't discern what actually God was saying to me. Right. I don't know what he's actually saying to me. So I was in a very difficult position now because the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Well, now, actually, I'm hearing a lot of stuff. So I was in a land of confusion. Right. I was in a land of confusion, even though I knew that I knew what it felt like to hear God's voice previously. I was now in a land of confusion in 2024. When I got back from Ghana, I was confused, bro, because I was like, what do I hear now? Of course, because um, I always like to find out, God, what are you saying? What direction am I meant to go to? What am I meant to do next? OK, what's the next project I'm meant to get behind? Am I meant to leave YouTube? Am I meant to be on it? Am I meant to do a new YouTube? Like I was asking a bunch of questions like, where do I go? What's the next thing? Because the last three years I weren't listening to you. So I don't have a direction at the moment. You get what I'm saying to you, right? Um, and so this is really imp this is really important, knowing that when you have a relationship with God, you need to be in a place where you can hear what God is saying to you. Now, had I been like, uh, you know, coming at the other end of it now and kind of being in a better place of it, you know, it, it's really, it, there's a story that I love as well, very much so, it's in Luke. Um, it's in Luke, uh, it's Luke 12, I think it is. Um, it might be Luke 12, I believe, or maybe not, maybe not Luke 12. I might have to go further, sorry. Um, I want to find a story with Mary and Martha, and I think I have gone past it. So let me go to it. I want to go Mary and Martha, and the reason why is because I love the story of Mary and Martha because of what he tells them, um, about what to do, yeah, and you see Mary and Martha doing two different things, Luke 10, there we go, um, two different things, and this is what happens sometimes to us as well, we can get caught up, but in order to, to be able to sometimes hear what God is saying, there's, there's a need to be still, this is something that God told me straight away, like when I came back from the streets, streets, okay, when I came up from the streets, um, uh, you know, uh, so LJ just said that you're studying Luke 12. That's the Lord talking to you already. See, that's how the Lord can sometimes talk. We're going to get into that. Sometimes the Lord can speak to you through someone else. And when you've heard, when you're studying Luke 12, someone told, and the funny thing was, LJ, LJ, the funny thing was, I was reading, I started reading Luke last week, but I stopped. I said, let me read Matthew instead. And somebody messaged me and said, the Lord is telling me to tell you to read Luke. And I was like, it's funny because I actually was starting to read Luke. And I said, mm, maybe not. Let me start with Matthew. 
So just like that, you know, LJ, God can speak to you in that moment just like that. So continue your study in Luke 12. Um, I've been reading that too, so I hate you. So Luke 10, verse 38 says, Now as they went to the now they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to his teaching. Now, this is the part I need this is really powerful, right? Because I'm Martha, I'm I'm Martha here, right? When I came back from the streets, I was Martha. Because I was like, okay, God, what do we need to do next? How do I go? What do I do next? How do I move? Da -da 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 -da. I'm ready to do all the kind of stuff. I'm like, God, I've, I've asked you to come back. I've opened the door and said, Lord, you come back into my life. You know what I mean? You have, you have jurisdiction here again. You know, you have every reign in my life again once more. Okay. All right. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, cool. Like, all right, cool. I'm going to let God enter the space. Right. But now I've become Martha because you see, look what Martha does here. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she went up to him and said lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone tell her to help me but the lord answered her martha martha you are anxious and troubled about many things but one thing is necessary mary has chosen a good portion which will not be taken away from her what did mary choose she chose to sit at the feet of jesus and listen right my ear just kind of went a little bit there she decided to choose a portion of sitting at Jesus' feet and listening. And I hadn't fully dis I hadn't fully distinguished that when I came back from the streets because my immediate thought was get into prayer, get into the word, uh, worship, ask God. A, uh, and, and when I get into prayer, I'm going to ask God, what is it? Da, 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 da. I was ready to go. And just this week, funnily enough, just this week, um, actually not Sunday, actually, um, after I've been praying for the last four weeks or whatever, fasting and praying, I'm still fasting. I mean, I'm not going to tell you it's my amazing fast. Listen, sometimes I do 12 to 6. Sometimes I do 6 to 12. Like, I'm not going to lie to you and pretend as if I'm the person. You should be consulting for fasting techniques. I'm not that guy. You know what I'm saying? The Lord knows in my heart and he knows how hard I'm working here to get these fasts going. Now, of course, jokes aside, and I mean, I'm being really serious about the fasting. Um, jokes aside, obviously, apart from that, right? Uh, when I was... Um, when I was... Uh, um, praying 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 i was talking a lot because i needed to, i needed to get what was on my chest i needed to get it off but what i didn't do and it's really funny about this right i went into a, um, there's a church near me and I, when i go through these seasons there's always a church that's open that no one is in there i love it i can't lie to you it's like god provide you know in the in harry potter i love harry potter as well guys so don't don't, don't, don't in, in harry potter there's a there's a there's a in especially in the order of the phoenix i think book number five where it says about there's a room of requirements if you know harry potter you know some of you're going to say it's demonic i hear you but let, for those of us who have read it there's a there's a book called there's a room called room of requirements it, it, it appears when you require it and so fun enough for me i didn't realize i required a room and a space to pray i can pray in my house but i i don't do you know what it's my house i wanted to get out and so when i came up from ghana i don't know i went on a walk and i remember there was a church there i went to the church and it's empty. There's no one in there. Oh, I went in there and I was like, oh, Lord, this is great. Oh, thank you. Open the church doors for me alone, Lord. You alone are worthy, Lord. <laughs> to be praised and the Lord. <laughs> Lord, we're good. Like, so not realizing, too, that God is opening a room of requirements for me so that I can begin to pray and communicate with him. <clears throat> so why am I telling you all of this? Because I was Martha, I was consistent in a place trying to serve or trying to move or trying to make things happen rather than when I came back, just sitting at his feet, just bowing down and saying, Lord, let me just, let me just sit at your feet. Let me just read your word and sit at your feet and contemplate. I didn't have time to complain, but I was like, I need answers now. Nah. So I didn't have time to contemplate and really hear the word of the Lord and really hear God's voice in my life. This Sunday... I uh, woke up. I didn't go to church, guys. I haven't been to church for a little while. Still ain't at that place yet. Can't lie to you. You can judge me on your own thing. I'm, I'm going to take my own journey with this one. I walked outside and I was like, I'm hearing the birds in the morning. I'm like, right, you know what? Cool. Let me take my phone with me, my Bible. It's on my phone. And I'm going to go for a walk. And I started walking. I said, I'm not going to say nothing. I don't, know what, I don't know what happened. I woke up in the morning. I said, I need to stop talking. I just, I just heard, I just heard, I'm not going to say I heard a voice. I just kind of, it's an impression. That's why sometimes God just speaks to you through this, through things. And I'm going to break things down for you guys. So you, you know how God can speak. I'm just giving you a little bit of a story background. 
And he kind of just spoke and he just kind of said, look, I just, I just kind of heard it and it was like, don't speak. So I'm now on my, so okay, I left the house. I said, I ain't going to speak. Because usually when I leave the house, I'm in full on worship, you know, <clears throat> I'm in full on worship. You know what I'm saying? Charles like, but we worship you. Let us, you know, I'm, I'm in full, I'm, you know, I'm going in, you know what I'm saying? Lord, you know, I want to go hard, right? But I was, he was like, just shut it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's my language coming through he didn't say that but he's like just shut it yeah okay so I'm, I'm keep all right cool so i'm walking for about half an hour i find a bench i park myself on the bench i didn't even realize as i'm walking for the last half an hour i'm just hearing my mind kind of go as i'm hearing my mind kind of go i'm kind of having a conversation but i'm not saying anything out loud and i can just i'm as i'm reasoning there's a scripture pops up in my head. I love the scripture by the way. Rachel, Jacob, Leah pops up to my head. Um, and as I was, it pops into my head. I'm kind of reasoning with the scripture. And I was like, well, I've got my phone with me. Let me look at the scripture. Open up the scripture. And I've read that scripture so many times. That One of my favorite scriptures is Rachel, Leah, and Jacob. I just, I love the, the fact that, that somebody tricked somebody to get them married. It's, just, it, it's, it's a vibe. I started reading it. I was like, wait, have I read? I said, like, have I read this before? Because there's a part of scripture I was like, Hold on a minute. I've read the scripture so many times, but I've never deeped this part of the scripture. And then I stopped and I was like, oh my gosh. And that was the first word I spoke that day. I said, God, oh no, I've not really been listening. I've not really been paying attention. You know, I've been talking a lot, but I've not really been listening a lot. So I started listening. So I, I, you know, I put the, uh, you know, I started walking and talking and everything like that. Then yesterday I went on another, I mean, this morning even, I went on another prayer walk. And as I went on a prayer walk, I said, shut up, don't say anything. No, it was yesterday, sorry, yesterday evening. I went for another prayer walk and I said, shut up, don't say nothing. Let's just see what God's going to say. And I just felt God just downloading things. I was like, the things that I needed to pray about, God was like, bah, 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 bah. This is what you need to pray about. Oh, you need to work on this, 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 this. And I was like, yo, and where you been? <laughs> and it's like I've been here but you've been always when you come to pray you come and you talk all the time and that's lovely it's beautiful it's actually really good it's not about, nothing wrong with it but you don't give me time to talk to you you come you talk for an hour two hours maybe three hours now Paul says I can talk you know what I, I, I love the fact I talk in more tongues than you guys but you know what's the point if I if, if I can't even you know if I can't even uh, if I don't have love I'm a, I'm a banging symbol you know what I mean what's the point if I can't discern it and so like you know he's like you you can speak all the tongues that you want you can talk as much as you want listen and you'll get some answers but there are some answers that come through you just listening to me and I was like but I thought I was listening he's like, yeah but you weren't being quiet though you were still talking I was like oh damn you ain't gonna come at me like that. I mean, come on, God. I mean, come on. I mean, this is the, the tongue speaking, you know, prayer warrior. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah, but I needed you to sit down. I was like, damn. Now, why am I saying all of this is because I want you to understand that hearing the voice of God is an active participation sport, right? There's still, there's still things on my, on my behalf I have to do. There are times where I could be in the kitchen and God might drop something in my spirit. There may be times where I'm cooking, God might drop something in my spirit. I might be going for a walk, he drops something in my spirit. It's about being able to discern the times and the seasons. And it's also about being able to be uh, flexible for what the spirit is doing in that moment. So I, I was doing a lot of talking, not a lot of listening. I was doing a lot of Mary, um, a lot of Martha, not a lot of Mary. See how Mary came in and a woman named Martha welcomed people in, right? He welcomed Jesus in. She welcomed Jesus in. Yet it was Mary who understood and discerned the time that as Jesus is in, I'm going to sit at his feet. Mary discerned that she should work. And many people, and I'm, you know, I don't want to go too psychological, but many people also who carry a lot of trauma are in a space of servitude, not in listening. Because it's very hard to listen. Because you start feeling inadequate when you have to sit still. I'm not doing anything, God. I'm not moving. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not causing the heavens to shake. I'm not causing mountains to be moved. You know, I, there's people that need healing. There's people that need this, people that need this. And you're used to serving very much. You're used to, you're used to trying to be uh, an agent for God. And you don't realize that being an agent for God means first listening, then going out. The Bible talks about in Acts, I think it's Acts. I want to make it very clear. Acts, is it Acts 16? It might be Acts 16. Um, no, nah, it's not Acts 16. Sorry, apologies. 
it's somewhere in Acts, and I'll find it for you guys in a second. But it, uh, um, but it talks about how it says separate Acts thirteen, I think it is. Yeah, Acts thirteen. It says separate Barnabas and Saul for me, and then send them out. You know what I'm saying, to you? So there's a there's a there's a place first where I have to listen, and then get sent out. You you know what I'm saying, to you? Right. So in that space, I wasn't listening. So. When I'm not listening, I, I want to be busy. I want to be ready. I want to go and do things. But God is like, hold on a minute. You don't even know the assignment. Sit down. Let's talk things through. Let me talk to you. Because faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of God. But it comes also that when God speaks to you specifically about something that you're supposed to do. That's why it says the word of the Lord came unto them. You always see in the Old Testament, the word of the Lord came unto them. The word of the Lord came unto them. The word of the Lord came unto them. And the reason why is because what, especially in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Bible. We do now. So when we say the word of the Lord came unto you, read your Bible, okay? <laughs> read your Bible, okay? All right? But it's very difficult to be in that place of, of, yes, sitting and waiting and just being patient. It's very hard to be Mary. It's very easy to be Martha because we're used to working all the time. Especially as black folk, let's be honest, you know, I'll make this specific. As black folk, we've been, working, we've been working like a workhorse for a lot of our lives. Our parents, 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 parents. None of us know any, most of us know hard work. So even when we come to God, it's hard work. You know what I'm saying, Jude? Because that's what we know. Even with God, we know it's hard work. Right? So um, let me uh, just bring this quickly. Um, I want to show you this as well. My time's going to run out. I don't want to work too long today. I'm not going to be on too long today because i got to go to a Bible study. But um, uh, let me bring this to your attention. Um, I want to read the scripture to you. I think I've read it before, guys. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the in the word. I mean, the moment that God revealed this scripture to me, my life was changed. My life was like, ooh, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, ooh uh. my life was changed. Shout out to the Message Bible too. Listen, if you're out there as well, listen, if you ever read your word, do not be afraid of different versions of the Bible. Don't let nobody scare you, okay? All right? Don't let nobody scare you, all right? You can read different parts of the different versions of the Bible and you'll get different understanding as you get more and insight. Don't be afraid of it. You know what I mean? I love to watch, read a message sometimes because it'd be breaking some stuff down. One of my favorite scriptures, uh, Galatians 3 verse 9 to 10. Here's one of my favorite scriptures. I'll tell you why it's one of my favorite scriptures. Because of what it reveals about understanding that we're not meant to be working for God. God is actually working for you. When I say, oh, be careful now, be careful because I'm going to take it and be like, oh my God. When I say God is working for you, allow God to work because what God wants to do is work. The work of the believer is to believe. This work, you know, God shot me. I was, you know, I was, I was there. I was doing pull-ups in the in the park. I was pulling up, doing pull-ups, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. And as I was there, I started to, I started tearing up. I started crying because I, 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 he reminded me of something that I'd said when I was like ten years old. Right? I remember when I was like ten years old. I said, Lord, I said at ten, at ten or ten years old or even younger, I said, Lord, you know, I just can't have kids unless I'm a Christian and I know how I know about you and so that my children will know about you and I and I started crying because I was like how does a 10 year old by the way I hadn't given my life to Christ at that point so how does a 10 year old and this is why we're going to talk about another thing the sovereignty of God how does a 10 year old who hasn't given his life to Jesus have that thought process because I remember what was happening I was standing in the corridor of my of my house at the time and I, I was hearing my parents praying and worshiping and I was like oh God I remember I tried to imitate my, my parents doing tongues. I was like, libby, 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 libby. <laughs> Yo, I was gagging. So I always remember that moment. And I was like, and I, and I look back and I, when God reminded me, I was like, why does a 10 year old say he doesn't want to have kids until he knows about God? It's only God. God's providence, because he knows the beginning from the end. From the beginning to the end, there's no place for arguments. You are God all by yourself. Like, you know what I mean? So anyway, back to the scripture. Galatians 3, right? Verse 9 to 10. Um, but I want to focus on 11 to, 11 to 12. The obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program should make it plain that no one can sustain a relationship with God that way. This is what was called the RWG, the relationship with God. Nobody can sustain a relationship with God that way, okay? The person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what? Who, what, who, what, who, what? He does it by embracing what God arranges for him. That is the work. I'm going to let God work. 
Okay, all right? We're going to let God work. In this relationship, I'm going to sit my ass down and I'm going to say, God, you get to work. My new, my new uh, phrase now is, I can see you're cooking, God. Continue to cooking. I'm ready to chop when you are. You know what I'm saying to you? That's something I've been talking to God about. I was like, hey, I may not understand it, but I can see you're cooking. Continue cooking so that I can chop later on. You know what I'm saying to you? I want to be in a place of chopping. I don't want to be in a... The Bible talks about how um, he was talking to the disciples and saying, listen, you are reaping where other people have sown. And the Bible also talks about that we, reap, we, we plant, we water, but God is one brings the increase. I want to be in a place where I'm simply just chopping what God has put down. You know what I mean? Why should I stress? I want soft life. I want to talk about that another time. I want a soft life. I'm so sorry. I don't know about y'all, but I want a soft life. I saw what Adam was doing and how he messed up and said, we've got to tore the ground. I don't want to be torn in the ground. You know what, Lord? I want a soft life. So do you know what? You go ahead and cook. Okay? You go ahead and cook and I'm going to chop what you're cooking. This is what God is asking to you. He's saying to you, listen, look, you want to stress for what? You want to do Martha for what? You want to, you want to do everything for God not realize, nah, let God do for you. You know what I mean? Doing things for God is the opposite of entering to what God does for you. You know what I'm saying to you? Right? So no point trying to fight this fight, this fight and trying to be in a space or trying to do things for God. No, no, God, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to let you do it for me. And I'm going to chop where I ain't sown because I know that God that you doing it. You know what I'm saying to you? So you continue to cook God. All of this again to say... That God is always speaking. Now, let me quickly go through what I need to go through. Because, um, you know, I've done my little story times and that. Um, how do we hear God? I, I, you know, and when I say how do we hear God, I want to make it very clear. Hearing God comes through spending quality time with God in prayer, in the word and in worship. Okay. All right. And I like to say, I like to think of worship as a living sacrifice. The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 that we should live our lives as a living sacrifice, meaning that your, your body, your existence, your actions, your thoughts should be a living sacrifice. But that comes when you renew your mind. Right. And you renew your mind through the word. The Bible says that he washes the bride. This is Ephesians 5. He washes the bride. I think verse 25. He washes the bride through the word. So. To get to a place where I'm going to be a living sacrifice, you know, when you say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. I just like singing, I'm not going to lie to you. Anyway, so to get to that place, first and foremost, to be a living sacrifice, for my body to be able to be submitted to, I need to renew my mind. I need to renew, renew this mind, which means getting into the word of God. Okay, so I have every intention and every will to want to follow God. The Bible says that the flesh is weak, though, the spirit is willing. You have every intention through your spirit to want to listen to God and hear God and follow God. But the fact is, your flesh is going to be talking. So how, do I, how am I going to hear him? Well, first and foremost, get into the word of God. Yeah, I know it sucks. I know because you just I know you want to get into prayer and just be like, God, digga, digga, digga. get in to the word of God. Okay, that's the first and foremost, I can tell you this now. The reason why you need to get into the word of God is because you need to understand who God is and you need to know what God's character is. So first and foremost, get into the word of God. Okay, right, before you start talking and making it heavy, of course, pray before you read the word of God, ask God for revelation and understanding, get into the word of God. Because understanding who God is and what he intends to do and what his promises are, what his provisions are, what he's planned to do, you know, what he's saying to you is in the word, right? We are blessed to be in a generation after the cross that now we have a Bible, we can just listen, we can just sit and read and we get to know all about God, the volume of God. The word of God is the most singularly, the most important thing you'll ever have, right? And it will stop you from being conned. It will stop people from taking advantage of you spiritually. It will stop you from lying to you. Because you know what? We lie to ourselves. Okay? The Bible says in Ezekiel 13, uh, Ezekiel, uh, 13 and it talks about how uh, they, you know, people, uh, that uh, it tells Ezekiel, Ezekiel, God tells Ezekiel, hey, Ezekiel, go and prophesy to those uh, false prophets because they're prophesying out of their hearts. You know that? You know how, you know, recently we had uh, the elections. In America, y'all had elections and, and there were so many prophets on YouTube coming out saying, I heard Trump was going to be on the, th on, the, on, the, on the throne. I heard Trump was going to be the, 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 next, the next president again. We heard Trump, 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 Trump. And did he become? No, he didn't. Biden did, didn't he? Oh, it's because, you know, no, that's not because you misheard because your heart led you to go and prophesy that word. Right? We can do that to ourselves. We can prophesy to ourselves and believe 
right? That what we're saying is what God is telling us. But reality is your emotions can dictate to you and tell you a thing. So the red, the, reading the word of God is important. Getting into the word is very, very important. Oh, that, that time during, uh, 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 hey, people were really, I was on YouTube. All I was hearing was Trump, 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 Trump is going to be this. Trump is going to be that. Trump is going to be that. Hey. Then people were like, people were like, oh, but well, it was conditional. Was it? When you said it, you said it was going to happen. There's a lot of people that, there's a lot of people that are not prophets. And that's the problem. A lot of people in this, in this and I don't, I don't want to shoot anybody, but there's too many people that are not prophets. You can prophesy. You're not a prophet. Let's not make it the same. Some of you are not prophets. Some of you can prophesy. You are not a prophet. Just because you can prophesy as a gift does not mean that you are a prophet. Do you get know what I'm saying to you? You have a gift. You, you, you can operate in that gift. Doesn't mean that you actually are a prophet. You're not the office of prophet. Some of you believe that you are. And that's why people were prophesying so wrong. And it's not, you know what I mean? Because you prophesied out of your heart. But hey, let me, let me not get too deep now. Someone's, someone's prophet is going to get on my neck. So let me not get there. Anyway. Um, so yeah, spending time with the word of God. Spending time in prayer. Um, it's also important um, And obviously worship Spending quality time with God in those three areas Prayer, worship, the word Okay, prayer, worship, the word Get into those three things But quintessentially what ties it all together Is the word of God So if you're not reading the word of God you're, 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 How God described it to me is You know, you have to understand that your body needs food And that's a fine But so does your spirit You got what I'm saying to you? It's, it says, the Bible says that out of the belly, the living waters flow. And I, the way I understood it one day was if, you know, the reason why some of us fast is because we're starving the flesh of food to starve the strength of the flesh. You know what I'm saying to you? So, so the reason why sometimes we fast is because we want to starve the flesh from being strong and having dominion. So what you do is by doing that, you feed the spirit by feeding it the word of God in that midst of time. So, you know, by you starving your body, it's a part of it, it's not all of it, and then you feed your spirit with the word of God through prayer, through, through worship. My friend, your spirit starts to gather strength. And now you start to, now when you hear something, you can start to begin to discern it, all right? So that's just me kind of starting it. Okay, um, how, the ways that we actually hear God, there are so many ways, okay? But let me give you a few of them. Dreams and visions and trances one way to hear the word of god conversations with friends and family another way to hear god strangers can tell you something the bible tells us that you know um people have entertained strangers have actually entertained angels hebrews 13 uh preaching at your church your pastor your you, maybe somebody took a preaching that day or somebody shared a word you know, your local community at church can also speak to you. Videos, books, and media can also speak to you. Let me tell you something that happens to me. Once you have the word of God in you, God can really open up doors to make you understand things. I was watching Madam Web, Spider-Man. I was hearing God speaking that thing. I just watched recently Dune. And I was like, oh my God, did they not deep it that when the guy, I'm not spoiling for anybody, but when they, what, some of the, the powers that the guy has got, that he speaks and the person's compelled. I was like, you know, I see it, God. When you speak, I'm compelled. When you speak, I'm compelled to move. Because you've told me. Uh, but let's not get into that. It's another story for another. I, I, you, hear, you hear it through media, through films, through uh, uh, videos. You can hear God in those spaces too. Um, you hear God uh, through your prayer and your personal time with him. Um, you hear him in the word of God. You will hear him in the word of God. And how that kind of works as well, and I'll get to that in a second or two. You hear it in your thoughts. Or maybe God even talking to you directly, you know, audible voice. We call it the audible voice. Um, and then another thing, it's also through circumstances. Sometimes God will speak to you through circumstances, right? Situations happen and bada boom, sh bada bam, you realize that God is talking to you, right? Okay, so I'm going to break this down really quickly because I've got another like 10 minutes or so. Um, and in this, uh, I want to be able to read this. Uh, okay. All right, cool. So, okay. Let me answer this question before I answer the next one. Um, how do I know it's God? Okay, how do I know it's God? Let me ask this question first and I'm going to break down the thing. How do I know it's God and not the devil or not, you know, my own thoughts? Okay, first and foremost, I want to let you know, okay, I want to let you know that it does happen that your thoughts, you yourself, I'm a dreamer. Okay, I'm a big boy dreamer. And just this week, Spending time with God and spending time in the word and actually asking him real questions about my dreams 
I came to a conclusion that some of the dreams are very emotional. It's when I say very emotional, not that they're not prophetic, that God is actually trying to speak to me through the dream, trying to tell me about my mental state. And I'll be like, well, I thought that was that. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's your mental state. I'm trying to let you know your mental state. You, where you are mentally, this is where you are. And so some of the dreams that you're having are because of your mental state. And I was like, damn, I used to always think that this was crazy. Like, nah, nah, it's your mental state. And I'm trying to show you that because of the way that you understand it. So now you have an eye open to it. You can be very much aware that when I'm speaking to you in dreams, sometimes it's your emotional, your mental state. And I was like, okay, cool, I hear it, right? So how do we know to discern whether the voice of God or what we thought is a voice of God is actually God? Like I'm going to say it again, back to the word. There is no, uh, the, the, the first and foremost thing is back to the word. You have to be in the word of God. I'm going to tell you now, and when I say back to the word of God, listen, someone can read the whole council of the Bible and get no understanding. The Bible says that Jesus said to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures and don't realize that all the scriptures are about me. It is not profitable to a man when he's not got the spirit of God in him. Unless God reveals it to you, it's not profitable oftentimes to you, right? You can use it as a good book or good wisdom book, but the reality is it requires the spirit man to understand. And so the Bible says that when Matthew, it says in Matthew 16 verse 18, when Peter was talking to Jesus, Jesus asked, who do men say I am? And Jesus, Paul, Peter was like, the son of the living God. And he said, good, this is, the father has revealed this to you. Now the Bible says that Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you like orphans. I'm going to show you somebody who's going to be your teacher, who's going to be your counselor. He's going to be your therapist. He's going to be your, 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 the, you know, he's going to, uh, he's going to, uh, you can say anything, you know, he's going to be your best friend, whatever. He, he, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm now starting to study it again. Man, he, he a bad mama jamma, okay? Or she's a bad mama jamma, whichever you want to put it. I don't really care how you want to put it. He or she, you know what I mean? But that's how you feel. I just know the Holy Spirit is a bad mama jamma, okay? All right? A bad mama jamma. The helper, okay? The Holy Spirit is a bad mama jamma. Let me tell you this now. So, um... So the Holy Spirit will help you understand the word of God and reveal it to you. It's better to read two or three verses and the Holy Spirit to absolutely unpack it for you than to read four or five chapters and you never got anything from it. You know what I'm saying to you? Know what your level is and know what, what you're trying to get from Scripture. And know that allow yourself to be, to, to, be, to be spoken to in that moment, that God wants to reveal some things to you in the Scripture, right? Um, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. Let me quickly read that um, so you get that as well. 2 Timothy... Three, um, let me read that off as well. Second Timothy three, verse sixteen. A yada da da yes. For his mercies they shall endure. Okay, um, second Corinthians. I'm sorry, second Corinthians. Uh, second Timothy three, verse sixteen. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, and for training in righteousness. The man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Who going to do that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit going to teach you some things. He going to reprove you. He going to train you. He going to rebuke you. He going to teach you. That is the Holy Spirit's job on this planet Earth while you're still here with him. Part of his job is to do those things. Okay? So get into the word of God. Okay? Now, how do we know it's God? Also, because it's confirmed. And it gets confirmed sometimes when you read, for instance, um, you know, maybe someone said to you, like, for instance, I moved, I moved, I moved to another city, right? I moved to another city called Birmingham. Now, when I, uh, um, you know, I spent some time in prayer and I was like, God, what do I do to, you know, I want to, I want to, I feel like you're God. I feel like you're, I feel like it's a knowing inside of you. And this, I'm going to talk about this in a second. I feel like there's a knowing in me. And I, I think, I think Birmingham might be it because I, I keep hearing Birmingham. Like I go to my friends and they're like, you know, I'm considering moving to Birmingham. I was like, ah, why is he saying Birmingham? I went, I, I had a dream and I saw Birmingham and I said, ah, Okay, maybe I'm meant to be in Birmingham. And I've always had an affinity for the area of Birmingham because I had an ex-girlfriend that was here previously. And I don't know, when I stood up, when I, when I was there, I was like, one day I said, one day I'll revisit here. I don't know why, one day I'm going to revisit here. And then um, a friend had a, a wedding here, well, an engagement here. And I stood on the mount, I stood on this building and I looked out and I said, God, it be you, be you now. Birmingham it be. You know what I'm saying to you? And then lo and behold, a friend, shout out to this friend, Catherine, shout out to her. Um, you know, she reached out to me and was like, look, they're doing jobs in my particular workplace. And I was like, what? I was like, I don't think I can do your job. Like, she's like, no, no, apply. 
ended up applying and I applied for a bunch of jobs. I, I, applied, I applied for like 20, 30 different jobs, both in London and in Birmingham. I got rejected from every single one, both London and Birmingham, right? But when she offered that job, I took it. I said, let me just try and see. The job just flowed. It just, I got the job. It flowed. It was easy. I knew it was God. And then I was going to, I was going to move um, in November or whatever. My dad told me, you got to stay. Yeah, you got to wait for me to go from Ghana and come back. And I was like, oh, I don't, you know, usually I don't listen to my dad, you know, because I mean, me and my dad, sometimes I'm always clashing with him, like, don't tell me what to do. You know what I mean? But I had got to a place where I'm like, I need to listen to my dad and be better, right? So as he said, don't go. And I was like, okay, cool. And luckily, luckily enough, I didn't go because, and I'm going to say lucky enough, by the grace of God, I didn't go because actually my job didn't start to December. They actually pushed back the dates all the way to December. So he was right. What I didn't realize is that God was still moving in those seasons. God was operating. His voice was being spoken through not only my not only not only through the word not only through dreams but, but through people as well right god will use people too to speak to you so you will know that because you have a, you have counsel around you you have the safety of counsel around you when paul in acts 21 wanted to go somewhere let me show you this acts 21 quickly oh my time gonna run out i'm gonna have to come back to next i'm gonna have to come back next week because we're gonna talk about this i, I want to stick to my time but acts 21 and really i hadn't even read this i was just researching a few scriptures and this came to me, and I was like, oh, uh, oh, uh, do, uh, do, da, da, do, da. the Lord is talking to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me stop. All right, Acts 21, um, uh, verse 4, he said, and having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. When our days days there were ended, we departed and went on our journey. Now, Paul actually ended up going, okay? Now, Paul ended up going and finding out, okay? They weren't lying. He going to get bound up. And he said, I don't mind. If I go there and I get bound up, I'm willing to die for this gospel. You know, Paul was rather die. You know, he's radical. So, you know, you can't get Paul in nothing, yeah? Paul's like, listen, if I'm going there, they can bound me up. They can take me up, but they can't, they can't take my spirit. You know what I'm saying? That's how Paul, Paul you know, Paul is like, you know, dedicated to, to causing carnage. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, I'm, I'm ready to die if I need to. I mean, I'd have been like, you know what? They told the Holy Spirit said I shouldn't go. Holy Spirit said I'm going to get bound up. I might not go. Now, we see that he speaks through people. And we see this also in Acts 16. Let me go back quickly. Let me just quickly go back uh, as well. I want to show you this. Acts 16. What am I saying? Acts 16. Is it Acts 16? Wrong scripture. Wrong scripture. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Acts 20. Ay, ay, ay. I need to look at my notes. Why are my notes there? Acts 13, sorry. Okay, but Acts 16 is one of my favorite scriptures. Scripture 2, to be honest. I love Acts 16. Um, uh, okay, cool. So, Acts 13, right? Look at this scripture here. Acts 13. Okay, now Acts 13 um, says, now they were in a church at Antioch, prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Lord, I was going to call him nigger, um, uh, Niger, I think, well, it could be nigger, I don't know, uh, Lucius of Cyrene, Manen, a, long, a lifelong friend of Herod, the tetra te Tetrarch, and Saul, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So the Holy Spirit actually spoke to the prophets there and told them, set apart Barnabas and Saul and send them on their way. So God can speak through other people, right? He can speak through your counsel, your friends, your family, your pastor, your, he can speak through me right now. We just had, I heard run LJ is saying that he was studying Luke 12. That could be God speaking to him and saying, listen, continue Luke 12. You know what I mean? Get deeper, my brother. You know what I mean? You, you know, so you, you, God can speak through these situations. So I'm going to run through really quickly um, some of the ways that God does this, right? Um, so again, uh, number one, dreams. God can speak through dreams. How is it possible? Joseph and Jacob, we know about Joseph. Joseph had a dream about the, uh, we had more of a vision. I think it was almost closer. But Joseph had a, a dream, a vision about his brothers bowing down to him, but it was in symbols. Um, and Jacob had the angels on a ladder going up and down. He dreamt there and then he made an altar right there. So God can speak through dreams. Through visions, we are in Acts 10 verse 9. Peter had a vision. Funny enough, this is well, so funny. Peter has a, a vision, a, sorry, a trance, not even a vision, a trance, um, where he sees the Lord telling him, get up and kill, and sees a table of food. And he said, ah, Lord, you know me, I'm a Jew. I don't touch on kosher food here, please. You know, and the Lord said, no, 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 my friend, get up and kill. 
Like, you, you know, I've, cha- I've, I've, I've spoken to you. Get up and kill. Um, again, through, act, through friends and conversation, people can speak a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, um, strangers, preaching at church, videos, books, and everything. Let me get to number one. In the word of God. So, you know, you might have had these experiences. I want to focus on this part, right? Where maybe you're reading a scripture. I was reading Psalms 37. God gave me the scripture. You know, I did my old classic. You ever done the, you ever done the classic... Um, you ever done the classic, uh, 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 I'm going to close my eyes, Lord, and I'm going to flick to a scripture. I just want you to lead. You ever done that before? I know you guys have done it before. I know, I know you, know, you, know, you know I'm not the only one. You know I'm not the only one. I'm like, Lord, just help me. Which scripture do I read? And you open it up and you read it and you're like, oh, God, no. <laughs> it cannot be. You know what I mean? Um, and that was me for uh, Psalms 37. Um, and it's been my scripture for the year. Um, and funny enough, I was someone else. I was talking to a friend just the, just the other day, and she was also reading Psalms thirty seven. I was like, Oh my God, God is talking to me. Yeah, and he, he just confirmed it. That scripture I need to be on it. I need to do that. I need to be in that word. Right? Go deeper, coach. Go deeper. So God can confirm something through the word of God, and you can see. Uh, <laughs> someone said, "Flip the light, Lord." <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, asking for a sign. And listen. Asking for a sign, listen, it's understandable. You know what I mean? We'll talk about that another day. But, you know, I've done the... I, Gideon's my favorite one because that... When, when I started, when I did YouTube full-time, I used Gideon as a reference point. I said, Lord, if I make a thousand pounds on YouTube this month, I promise you, I'm a, I don't care about the job situation. I'm going to go full-time into it. I made 990. It was good enough for me. Yeah? I didn't even make the full thousand. I made 990. And that was a confirmation for me. Because it was about four times more what I've ever made in my entire life. I didn't need to know anything else. Now, I did about 90 videos that month. But it, it you know what I mean? I made about 90. I, could, I, I was on smoke that month. I had about 90 videos. But either way, I was dedicated. And God was speaking for that moment. Okay? Um, you know, God can also speak um, in a small, still voice. Sometimes you hear an impression or a thought or, you know, you get a little tinge in your mind where you see a picture and that sometimes can be God just speaking to you. You know, the Bible says about Elijah, uh, Elijah you know, there was a small, still voice that came to him in a cave. Sometimes there's a small, still voice that you just kind of hear something and you're like, not really sure. There is impression. Sometimes you get an impression. You ever been to been in a space where you're like, I don't get a good feeling. I just don't know. I just don't get a good feeling. I'm not a good feeling. And some of you are really well versed in this and you don't even realize. And we call it a gut feeling. Well, as I believe that is, but for the believer, the gut feeling sometimes is God like telling you, like I, I, like I usually don't get a gut feeling, but when you get a gut feeling, sometimes God is telling, God is using your ability for emotional intelligence to tell you something. Oh, you just didn't know. Sometimes God is using your emotional intelligence because a, a gut feeling is emotional intelligence. What you, what's actually happening in a gut feeling is that your your subconsciousness is able to register information much faster and telling you. Okay, it's telling you that, hey, we're, we've seen something. That's why sometimes women will tell you we have female intuition. It's not. You just, you're just emotionally intelligent enough to be able to pick up an aspect of intelligence, which is we're reading information before it happens. So what you're doing is you're picking up. And the one thing I, I, I researched in psychology, whoa, we're going to get into this now, um, that I, I remember I did a video on this, that women are able to pick up up to, I think, 26, like, I can't, I can't remember it was like, the way that they, they see facial expression, basically. So, and it makes sense because if you really deep it with women, if they're always a person that has physically been in a place where they're under threat, you look, you learn ways to be hypervigilant. Like almost like an animal where it goes, it's hypervigilant because it, it knows that it's a prey. So as a woman, I can understand too, if you develop those things over time, why there's a hypervigilance. So that hypervigilance also becomes as well a part of the intelligence, being able to pick up certain things before it happens. So you see a man moving a certain way or talking a certain way, or you hear the tone and you're like, oh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. baby no that ain't it but it's actually your intelligence now it's picking up certain little small little factors and small little things and you're not feeling it and sometimes god will use that as a believer to go like my friend you feel that shake a leg and move shake a leg and get the movements you know what i'm saying to you yeah you don't need to be here and you'll be and when you don't do it you find out how many times women tell you listen i had a gut feeling i knew that i i felt at the beginning we, we you, you knew that because that god was telling you something from the beginning right so you have to understand that god can also use that as a way of telling you pre-warning you this don't do it or this don't do it this don't do that do you know what i'm saying to you that ability 
uh, you know. Um, and then God can tell you some stuff through your circumstances. My last point, I've got to get off here, through your circumstances. So there can be circumstances that happen. I love this particular aspect. Um, I was reading this, and we can decipher this another time a little bit later on. Um, Acts 21, I think it's Acts 21. Um, is it? Oh, Acts 27, is it? Let me see. Yeah, 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 yes. Um, oh, okay, no, I want to show you something, actually. The gut feeling, let me show you something. I want to show you the gut feeling. Gut feeling here, um, Acts 27. says it, since t much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over, Paul advised them saying, sirs, I perceive or I discern that the voyage will be injury and much loss, not only on the cargo and the ship, but also of your lives. Now, it doesn't say the Holy Spirit told him. It doesn't say the Lord, the Lord came into him. It says he perceived that perceiving is what I'm talking about when God sometimes talked to you and said, I, you better perceive this. You better perceive it. Um, let me see this. Uh, Acts 16. Acts 16. Oh, I was already on there. Okay. Uh, Acts 16. Go back there. Sorry, guys. Verse 6 to 10. Okay. All right, cool. So sometimes a door can close, not always, but for a time, okay? So Acts 16, verse 6, and they went through the region of uh, Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak to the word, a word in Asia, right? Door closed. And when they came, when they, when they had come up to my, uh, my, 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 hey, Messiah. They attempted to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Masia, uh, they went down to Trochus, Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him, to, urging him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. So doors were shut, you know. So sometimes when people say, obviously, when God closes close one door, he opens another. Yes, but it's not necessarily biblical. But what can happen actually in that situation is that the doors were shut. He tried to go, Masia, yeah, I see ya. Um, um, he tried to go to, to, to Mycenae, he tried to go to Bithynia, and the doors were shut. But then he had a dream, and the dream told him, listen, Macedonia, come, we want to see you, right? Door opened. So sometimes in your circumstances, God can talk to you and say, hey, you know what? I'm talking to you. Anyway, listen, my time is done. I got to go. I got to be out of here. Um, but I appreciate you guys. Let me pray before we go. Um, I know it's a bit of a fast ending. I wanted to stick to my time. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, oh God. We want to thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Um, we discussed the topic of hearing the Lord's voice. Um, next week, we'll have uh, Mike Boating on as well. And we'll have a real conversation about that. And I really appreciate the opportunity in time, Lord, that we can discuss your word and discuss things um, of a biblical nature. Father, we pray that, Lord, anybody here who listened and heard, I pray that, Lord, you give them understanding. And I pray also that, Lord, that you will open their eyes to see you. Um, and I pray that, Lord, that you'll give them a heart to want to pursue you and pursue the things of God and all the righteousness attached to it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We appreciate y'all. Listen, stay locked, stay loaded. We're going to see y'all very, very soon. And uh, yeah, look, look, shout out to Lee. We appreciate you as well. Uh, we're, going, we're going to bounce, people. Okay. All right. Let the good Lord speak to you. But remember, pay attention. Listen. All right.